Today, we're going to talk to our resident PPC expert, Vince, on things like what's now possible since Amazon is giving hourly data about PPC, and also a sneak peek at how you can run Google ads from inside of Helium 10. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. You wanna know what keywords are driving the most sales for listings on Amazon? To do that, you need to know what highly searched for keywords the product is ranking for maybe at the top of page one. You can actually find that out in seconds by using Helium 10's keyword research tool, Cerebro. Now that's just one of the many, many functions that make this tool my favorite tool in the whole suite, and it's the most powerful keyword research tool ever created for e-commerce sellers. For more information, go to h10.me forward slash Cerebro, h10.me forward slash C-E-R-E-B-R-O. Don't forget to use the Serious Sellers Podcast discount coupon, SSP10. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the Amazon and Walmart world. We have got uh, somebody who is no stranger to the show, Sir Tacos himself, Vince Montero. How's it going, Vince? <laughs> I'm never going to escape that name, am I? I'm nope, good. nope, nope. It's better than Mr. Tacos, though. You know That is uh, true. Yeah. That is true. I, I did make that upgrade <laughs> in title. Yep, indeed. So, you know, it's been, I don't know, it's been probably a good, you know, maybe nine months at least, or possibly even a year since you've been on the podcast last. And, and the main thing I want to talk about is just, you know, some general PPC strategies, but also um, it, it's funny, you know, there's this phrase out there in the world, like, like, you know, like, like the, for example, I'm a, I'm a Los Angeles Clippers fan. And, you know, 20 years ago, you know, the Clippers had, had, had a, you know, they had a strange owner, very bad reputation for the, for the team. Uh, and so then people would say, oh, hey, the Clippers nowadays are like title contenders. It's like, hey, this is not your parents, you know, your, your parents or your uncle's Clippers, you know, this is different. And, and now, you know, we had ads and then we had, we launched Atomic. And then there's a lot of people out there who maybe, you know, we're not talking 20 years. We're talking like, if you have not used Atomic in the last year, you could definitely say, hey, this is not your parents' <laughs> Atomic. This is not the 2021 Atomic. There are just so many new things and and stuff that doesn't even have to do with Amazon, which is crazy. We're going to talk about that a little bit. But uh, we're definitely going to be talking about all the upgrades, um, arguably uh, better upgrades than even the Clippers have had, my, my, my precious Clippers. Uh, I would agree. There. But uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll try and keep it low on the basketball references here. But first of all, um, just in general, were you shocked – when Amazon said that they were going to to add that marketing stream um, visibility to to developers, where you can yep. actually see how you're doing on PPC on an hourly basis, or were you expecting that? I, I, I'll say that I was pleasantly surprised by by that announcement, by by that availability. It's something that actually, you know, it benefits them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, people that were using maybe ads or Atomic before. Uh, there's load time issues that happen with the current, with the way it was set up through the Amazon API. So, you know, they're over there trying to, um, unbottle or, you know, un- cause bottlenecks happen sometimes when you're talking about tons of data going back and forth between systems. So it actually benefits them as well to give us that kind of same hourly reporting that, you know, they themselves are able to have more visibility on within seller central. It, it's been a few months since that got launched and different people, you know, like destiny out there and others have, have, have kind of published to LinkedIn and other places, some cool insights, anything, you know, stick out to you. Like you saw somebody say, Oh wow. You know, the, the, the cost per click goes down at this time or, or the, the conversion rate is really high on this day. Like I, I, pr- I can't think of any myself, but you, you're way more into this than, than me. Anything that you remember? Uh, you know, it, it's been, people talk about um, the term day parting a lot. So this is kind of bringing that ability into uh, into the tools. And so, you know, Bradley's kind of leading in with the biggest thing that, that just launched. <laughs> mm-hmm. But our elite members now uh, in Atomic and, and hopefully soon to be uh, Diamond, but our elite members that have access to Atomic now have that visibility um, to look at their hourly data on, uh, you know, preferably a larger set 
of data, we suggest a minimum of two months uh, looking at data so you can really see what's happening when. Um, and then obviously that's going to allow you to be making budget decisions on, you know, uh, certain hours of the day for certain campaigns. Um, so people are super just excited in general about that term day parting. But what I want, what I'm super excited about is actually reinforcing the fact that, especially for new sellers, which uh, we have a lot of newer sellers uh, using Atomic, um, the goal really of it is have your campaigns running, especially at launch. Your campaigns need to be running at least two to three weeks or four weeks if you can do it. If you got the budget, they should be running 24 seven. So that's something that we say is a best practice so you can get the most data in general. Once you have all that data, that's when you can start optimizing things down. But what we do see a lot is that a lot of sellers, sellers are more cautious with their spend. So they don't have budgets that maybe go throughout the whole day because they're a little bit more tentative. So what I'm hoping is that, that this day parting, sorry, this hourly data reporting will actually help them be a little bit less um, worried about that. Because now if they do what I say, <laughs> if their campaigns are running 24 seven at launch for the first two to four weeks, they can then look at that data after the fact and be like, okay, we did, we did what was uh, suggested. Now we can actually see not only what didn't work and, you know, what keywords or search terms didn't work and went and, and where, but also when things uh, might not have worked and when things might've worked better. And then making those really smart then optimization decisions on budget allocation. Um, so that's what I'm most excited about, you know, training and um, demoing you know, in atomic in, uh, in, in the next few weeks. Yep. Now, now this, we, we just announced that at sell and scale. And also, uh, if you guys watched our, our BBL, but what, one thing I liked about your, your slide there that you did at BBL was you kind of like bullet pointed some of these things that, that this new data point can kind of either answer like questions that it can answer or insights it can give you. And, and the top one that you mentioned was what hour of the day is my a cost lowest. And so that in itself is a question that maybe some people didn't even know to ask, like, what, you know, my, my a costs can be different at, at different times of day. What, what have you seen playing around with some of this data? Yeah. So it just things like that, like being able to, to track, obviously not only when it's low, but when it's high, you know, those people that are trying to optimize their campaigns, that's when they want to know. But obviously when it's low, that's when you want to then focus that budget, you know, on, on, on that time of day for that campaign. So that kind of power is just it, it is it's going to be kind of game changing for a lot of the sellers. But, you know, it's also you know, good to know things like, you know, how long does it take to get what's what's my average conversion like from click to sale? Because as people may not know, um, sometimes people click on an ad, but they don't buy it immediately. They buy it like a few days later mm -hmm. up to a week. Uh, Amazon tracks that pick from the pixel. Uh, for sponsored products and up to 14 days for sponsored brands and sponsored display campaigns. So having this kind of data is also going to make it clearer, you know, what are my actual window? What's my average uh, time for purchase for, for my product? And that alone is also going to be able to help you make some strategic decisions yeah. on how you're optimizing your campaigns, given that you now know that, that kind of data point. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Now, um, what about, traffic you know like so what visibility is amazon you know giving you know because that was that was another thing you talked about at bbl so like when, when we say traffic does that mean kind of like your impressions or yeah. okay yeah that that strictly means impressions so that that is definitely something that um when optimizing it's another key point to look at um especially on a keyword level um if you're getting uh keywords that maybe don't have the best conversion but you can see that they're getting a lot of impressions during maybe certain times, uh, it might be worth it to use that data point, keep it in mind, and 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 say, you know, what? I'm not gonna make, I'm not gonna trim this too far down because with Amazon ads, it's it, it, it's an ad, it's a commercial, it's the billboard on the side of the road. It's all about visibility. So the more visibility you have, the overall uh, more effective your ads are going to be, and then potentially you're leading to people remembering your name and typing in your your actual brand name. And, and potentially buying things organically. Now, let, let, let's do a, a, a sample scenario. You know, whether somebody's using Atomic, whether they're using PackView or, or some other tool that might have access to this special data point. Um, g give me an example of something that I might see now that I'm analyzing something at an hourly level or a daily level. And then the action now that 
I should take because of this? <laughs> so that's 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 a good segue. So not only do we have access to the hourly data now, what Atomic launched is uh, called Schedules. And Schedules means just kind of like what it sounds like. Uh, it's very it's similar to our rules that we have in Atomic, but it's basically saying, hey, I'm looking at this data point and I can see that uh, at you know uh, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. I see a spike in sales on this particular days. Who knows? Who, who knows what it could be? You don't know until you look at the data. And I'll, trust me, it's going to be different than what you expect. <laughs> uh, but with that kind of information, now you can set a, you can create a schedule in Atomic that says on this you know Monday and Tuesday between 5 a.m. and 7 uh, p.m. I want to make sure that my budgets are increased during this time frame. Hmm. Um, and then you can make an, uh, another schedule that says, you know, even maybe in the same days, same Monday and Tuesday, you can see a, a, a major dip in, uh, in traffic in, later on in the day. You can create a schedule that says, you know, make sure that my budget goes down during these times because it's not probably even going to be spent, but it's better to allocate your budget towards those times that you do see higher conversions. Um, and not even that the budget's going to be spent, uh, all spent during that time either. But we do notice that when you assign budgets or when you change budgets in Amazon on campaigns, they do notice like it, it does something, it sends some kind of like signal up. Um, and it says to Amazon, Ooh, uh, I can spend more money on this particular campaign. So it, it, it gives it a little bit more attention and even though it won't hit the daily budget, uh, it gives it more attention and you definitely want that extra attention again during those times of day that you can see that you're getting uh, higher higher conversions, lower ACOS. Um, but it all depends on what you want. Maybe you see a time of day that you have higher conversions, but you also have a higher ACOS. Okay, well, if you're looking at PPC holistically, which you should be doing, and you realize that you know those maybe they're high like we were talking about before high impression keywords maybe that's why there's higher a cost there's just a lot more traffic but you might say you know what a part of my strategy i'm going to make sure during that time of the day that those are really pumped up because i don't care that i'm paying a higher a cost i have a low tacos i have a low total a cost so that's your strategy that's your strategy for that and and again the the uh, the cool thing that we just launched at sell and scale is that ability to actually create those schedules uh, within Atomic. Okay, so even one of the options, I believe, and, and, and I know, you know, we're, we're talking in the sense of Atomic guys, but again, you know, some of you might be using our sister company, PackView, uh, there, there's similar capabilities where where you might see just crap, crap performance during a certain time of day. Like maybe it's because there's a bunch of, um, you know, people from another time zone, like sending fake clicks or something like that. But I can actually have the option where I'd be like, you know what, from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., I'm just going to close this or, or, or close uh, pause, pause this campaign. Like, like that would be an actionable thing to do also. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what we, we, we try not to encourage pausing campaigns Yeah. Uh, again, uh, because most of our listeners, most of the people using it are newer sellers. So we want to make sure that they have their campaign. So what, what we always suggest is just dropping, dropping the budgets, dropping the bids. But if you're looking at a solid set, you know, two months, three months worth of data, and then you do see that, then yes. What we, what we want to avoid, again, is people getting overly excited about this and then shooting themselves in the foot, right? So it's perfectly acceptable to do that kind of thing that, you know, pausing, but make sure you are looking at that data and make sure it's not just a fluke, right? Maybe, maybe something happened with your listing. Maybe something happened with your stock. You know, you got to make sure that you're keeping all these, uh, uh, you know, things in mind that it might not just be time of day. Maybe there's something else that happened. So we just really want to encourage people to uh, leverage schedules, uh, you know, more to just uh, allocate budget allocation and making those strategic decisions on uh, just to make sure, again, that those campaigns that are doing really well get that extra love um, and, you know, and then re pull back for the times of day when it when it's not. <laughs> and, and it's when it's not can be up to you, like maybe your strategy is. Again, like I said, you, you just want low, high cost stuff to be reduced, but maybe your strategy is different. Maybe you're just using your PPC just to drive visibility, drive engagement. You can use the schedules for that too because you've got that data now on an hourly basis. A question about how Amazon actually deals with this data. You know, let's say today is Thursday at 10.30 a.m. I click on something, right? 
Um, now, Sunday night at 4 p.m., I actually purchase, I end up purchasing that product. Does that mean that now I, I come into my office first thing Monday morning and now I look back at last week's that that Sunday night sale is attributed to to that you know ten thirty a.m. from Thursday or or is it pushing it to it happened at Sunday night? Yeah, it's you're always going to get the the attribution to back to the time when it was first clicked, um, but we are making it clear just in general what like I said before like what are the what is the time frame or what is the average I would say uh, between uh, click and purchase. So it, it's it's not. You know, Amazon, Amazon is giving that Amazon is giving that data. No, they're not. They're oh, not okay. 100% giving that. Like that's what I'm saying. It, it, I was it, about to say, good grief. I mean, they're, they're, they're announcing so much <laughs> stuff these days. I, I can't take anything for granted anymore. Exactly. So no, it's more about more about getting a better feel for what your averages are. Right. And, and what I, what I, what I was saying by that is that most people, most people don't even think about that. Exactly. The scenario that you just gave, most people don't even remember even that there's a pixel right yeah. and that there's a click that happens is it seven like, days or how, yeah what's the max seven days okay People, seven days. you know so a shopper can click your ad on a on a monday and it can, mm -hmm. they can buy it you know that that following sunday right and uh but the sale gets attributed to that to that monday so 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 then if i'm using atomic are you suggesting maybe that i should always look at data at, and looking at this you know the, the, this hourly stuff and, and daily stuff i should be maybe looking at at least one week's old of data oh, yeah or? yeah you should definitely okay. at least be looking at at least one week's old because again you we're dealing with those pixels but in general like i said before you know you want to be looking at very large data sets when you're when you're trying to make hourly analytics decisions because you want to make sure you're capturing trends right so that's why we suggest minimum of 60 days of data looking at it. But yeah, you want to be looking at just to make sure it's it's clean and you're safe. You want to make sure that you're looking at, you know, that seven days back. If you're running a lot of sponsor brand sponsor display campaigns, that's 14 days. So if you want to be super, super clean, uh, you know, the monthly reports that, that I work on, you know, are always two weeks out, you know, so if, if there's a report due for, uh, you know, uh, last month, then it's going to get actually collected all the data is going to be looked at in the middle of the, 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 the following month. Um, that's just in general, best, best practices, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> at least seven days. <laughs> all right. So now the other thing that, uh, you and Taryn announced at a uh, bigger, better launch was, was something that people have been asking for, for a lot, especially lately, since a few months ago, we added Amazon attribution, you know, to helium 10, but then some people, including myself was like, well, this is great, but, I, I'm, I am not running, you know, Facebook and Google ads and things like that. So I don't even have a place where I can use Amazon attribution right now. Uh, and then we're like, and then Amazon or Helium 10 is like, you know what? Asking you shall receive. So what was the other big announcements that we did at, at, uh, at BBL? Yeah, uh, we, last we, week? We, we, we talked about it at BBL. We also covered it pretty extensively in, in our talk live talk is Tuesday session that I did with Taryn, um, which there will be a recording available of that in our talk is Tuesday playlist. So if you guys want to get more in depth, uh, Taryn dives deep into it there, but yeah, effectively we are including Google ads now in, uh, in atomic. So you can actually look at your, uh, Google ads that you're running. And again, these are Google ads that run directly to your product listings. Um, and, uh, which Amazon's getting more and more, uh, I would say comfortable with, and then they actually are asking for this more. So, um, yeah, we're, we're giving that clean, uh, uh, clear line of visibility. Um, right now we're in, um, we're kind of still piloting it. We've got a bunch of people that signed up during, uh, uh, sell and scale. And, uh, you know, as, as things progress, it's going to become something that's going to be, uh, hopefully, uh, people that are, what, what we find actually, what was, it was kind of hard to get people to find people for the pilot, <laughs> uh, initially when we first started asking about it. So not a lot of people are doing this and it might simply be because attribution is hard. So yeah. we are making it very Google ads are hard. That was why I, I was like, hard. I'm like, exactly. man, I've had to learn so many Amazon things. Now you want me to learn Google. Google. So, so that's why I didn't do it. You know, even though I was running a pretty decent sized business, exactly. I was kind of yeah. lazy, you know? Yeah. So we're, we're hoping to tackle the, those, uh, those pain points, uh, with this latest, uh, um, addition to another, another channel, you know, being able to, uh, track another channel, um, is very important for your Amazon PPC. And it's almost, you know, of course, I'm I'm in PPC, so I'm in the marketing inside Amazon. 
But you, you know, you guys, I'm, I'm sure you guys are aware, it's getting, it's becoming more and more part of a regular plan to also do some external marketing. So if you haven't done it before, now is now is your chance to do it, and then uh, you know, do it with with us within Helium Ten and Atomic. Yeah, I mean, regard you know, even though I I, I haven't or I hadn't done it before, you know, I, I understood the money I was leaving on the table because not only can you get conversions, you know, which is, is money in itself, but, you know, like, like let's say I'm running a, a Google ad on a certain search term like coffin shelf. Well, Amazon can, you know, if somebody clicks on a Google ad after or, or even just an organic ad after the search of coffin shelf on Google, Amazon knows where this comes from and you're going to get some residual rank juice you know, on that keyword that was searched on Google. So, so it helps your, your Amazon ranking sometimes to run Google ads or to have SEO uh, in Google. Now, this is actually not a separate tool, but it lives inside of Atomic, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, that's how we're building it out. <laughs> and, um, I'm just looking at some of the screenshots that we had, uh, you know, shown and there's like a, a campaign builder. Right. And so basically all I, have to do is set up my own Google ads account and then just what tie it to atomic or what? Exactly. Exactly. Using some of the attribution, you know, the, uh, that you just, you know, mentioned that we've added in, in, uh, um, helium 10 as well. You can really easily then just create your campaigns right within, uh, right within our tool. Um, and then track everything, which is the whole point of attribution. So you can actually see, you know, what is the, the effectiveness of, the, of this, uh, uh, these Google ads. And you know we have been running this uh, pilot for a little while, and I will mm -hmm. say, and Taryn shared as well, that we are seeing really positive results right now, um, even from from sellers that have just started. They're seeing some really really good um, uh, attribution, really good conversions, and it's actually you know working out for them so far. And I think, like with most things, it's because it's still newer, right? A lot, like we were saying, a lot of people aren't doing it. So yeah. When you get in early, it, it, the the results typically end up being pretty pretty good. <laughs> yep. And, and remember, guys, if you're using these attribution links uh, that we're going to have inside of Atomic, um, or or just in general, you know, we, like I said, we have Amazon attribution inside of Helium Ten. Remember, you're you're getting ten percent kind of kickback. You know, it's taken out of that fifteen percent commission. So so you know, you might think, oh man, you know, this is uh, I'm now paying cost per click off of Amazon. Uh, it's a money drain, but. Just remember, you know, if Amazon sees this traffic came from an attribution link, you know, you're getting 10 percent back. And that's 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 no small number right there. So that, yeah. I'm not saying it pays for itself, but but in some situations, it, it could almost pay for itself if you have a low CPC. Exactly. It, it definitely helps. CPCs being as tight as they are, it's definitely a benefit. Are we going to consider tacos now at the overall advertising level or is tacos in Atomic still just going to be your Amazon PPC? And then, and then your 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 spend on Google is going to be separate. Well, in general, tacos is is going to stay within uh, PPC because ACOS is an Amazon term, right? So everyone mm -hmm. else uses ROAS, and Amazon's slowly moving towards a ROAS, right? So we're we're game changers here at Helium Ten, though. You know, we set trends, uh, Vince. Just because everybody else does it, that doesn't mean that we. I'm holding on to tacos <laughs> as much as possible. No, but but yeah, uh, you know, obviously, looking at everything holistically is is. Yeah the best approach. Um, so just having that, that information on your Google ads as well is, yeah, that's, that's also going to be, uh, available to drive, you know, your, your strategy based on a holistic approach. You know, this is the amount I spend in Google. This is the amount I spend in Amazon. These are the results. So I'm, I'm hoping that that will again, take people out of the, the mode of, of, uh, you know, just what am I getting from, from PPC and more, What's my total sales? At the end of the day, it, it's your total sales on Amazon. That's that's what you're that's what you're there for. Um, you're, you're, yeah. not, you're not selling on Amazon just to get PPC sales. You're selling to get total sales. You know, we, we had mentioned that you know th this was available to get into like this this pilot or beta program, and there were some people in it before, and then some at sell and scale. If I'm listening to this podcast now and I'm interested in it, do, do I need to wait until a certain time or, or is there any way that, I, you know, I might be able to get into this beta? We will, we'll, we're going to make an announcement. We'll send out a, a you know, email. Uh, we'll make some announcements when it, when it's open in general, or maybe we're, we'll make an announcement saying, Hey, we need more people in, in this pilot. So, um, 
it, you, you'll, you guys will hear from us about it. Now, go, going back to the, the Amazon side of uh, Atomic, what are some other, you know, since, like I said, it's been a while since you've been on the, the show, uh, what are some other updates to Atomic for, for somebody who maybe who hasn't been in the program for the last six months? Yeah, there's a couple of other updates that we have done that uh, I think are, are worth mentioning. You know, as, as people that um, use Atomic know, or any actually, you know, a PPC tool, one of the biggest reasons for using them is simply that uh, they're going to help you with your bidding. They're going to do bid increases, bid decreases based on your goal. That could be an ACOS goal. It could be a sales goal. It could be an impression goal like it is an Atomic. Um, so we have those algorithms already in, you know, our tool kind of baked in when you either create campaigns or you can add rules to existing campaigns. Um, but what we heard is that sometimes, uh, again, everyone's different. They're all in different uh, strategic modes. You know, so for some people, our bid suggestions, for example, were too conservative. You know, um, we, we Atomic was looking at certain uh, keywords that maybe weren't getting enough impressions, and it was incrementally increasing them like by a penny or two. So maybe you've got a, you know, a seller that goes, uh, you know what, I don't want to increase it incrementally just by a penny. I want it to be 10 cents <laughs> incremental changes. Um, I wouldn't suggest that unless you're trying to be super aggressive, but you can now make those kind of changes in Atomic. So we have in our suggestions, we have our a settings tab within our suggestions page, um, and it's called the bid suggestion settings. Uh, you know, we're, I'm loosely calling it the bid aggressiveness slider because <laughs> that's all. It's a slider. You you scale up and down on your bid increases or your bid decreases. You can scale them up and down. So whichever way you want to go, as far as being more conservative or more aggressive with the bids that you are seeing um, or the bid decreases that you're seeing. So you, you can play on, on, on both um, directions and you can tell the tool, you can tell Atomic, you know what, I, I want to be a little bit more aggressive with my decreases maybe. Maybe maybe you're seeing you know too much spend and you know Atomic is doing its job of trimming things down, but maybe you want it to be trimmed down even faster. So it's a, it's a really great um, additional layer of uh, control that we're adding. And that's what we try to do with Atomic. We do a lot of things automatically, but we also want to give you guys, you know, more control over what you're seeing within the tool. And that's what these are doing. Um, that being said, uh, it also means that you can screw it up. You can screw up your campaigns <laughs> quite easily. <laughs> so it's one of those things with, you know, uh, you got to really understand what the thing is doing before you do the thing. How... Would you suggest somebody, you know, I've been talking about people who haven't been using Atomic for a while, but let's say I've been using it like myself, you know, I've been using Atomic exclusively for all 250 of my PPC campaigns for since its inception. Yeah. Yeah. So well, with ads and then with Atomic. Yeah. yeah. So for me, <laughs> now that this new feature is out, like, I mean, just, just right off the top of my head, like, like the thing that I might change is like, for example, like, let's say I noticed that the suggestions back in the day. Uh, was a little bit light. Like for example, let's say my my A cost was eight percent, my target is twenty five, and then in the old days, Atomic would suggest raising my bid like four cents. But so in this, which would probably just bring me up to eleven percent, you know. But my target is twenty five percent or twenty. So then in this case, I would go into that bid aggressiveness slider and say, hey, you need to be aggressive be, yeah, be aggressive. aggressive that's okay. why i'm calling it an aggressiveness slider because you can choose you can well, choose what's the your... real what's the real well what's it really called <laughs> no because if people start searching for aggressiveness slider they might bid not suggestion it. settings suggestion settings okay bid, bid suggest, no specifically for bids bid suggestion settings you know because we also do suggestions for new keywords and negative keywords this isn't that this is straight up what your the bids that you that you're seeing us give you in our suggestions yeah in your case you would just say you know what i want to be a little bit more aggressive with that because you know, Atomic is designed to do incremental changes. So it looks at a data set, gives you a suggestion, but they're incremental. Like we don't want to blow through people's budgets, you know? So, but if you are, you're confident, maybe you've got an influx of, uh, of test budget. <laughs> uh, maybe you're launching a brand, a brand new product. Um, then this is what, this is what this is for. Now, this is just an account level. So it's the entire account. So you can't yet, which is something else maybe we'll work on later this year. Um, the goal would be to be set those kind of aggressiveness levels, you know, per per rule, right? So you can look at oh, this 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 rule, or maybe even campaign level, and be like, this is how aggressive I want to be. Right now, it's it's the it's the entire account. So really, it should be. Uh, it's great for uh, people that just have a couple of products. Maybe they're the same, and you can really just um, 
at an account level make those make those uh, minor adjustments or major adjustments because we're we're allowing uh, quite a bit of uh, of um, wiggle room for people on these on the slider. Um, now one of the, one of the other updates that you know I, I maybe flew under the radar for most, but this is <laughs> just because I'm weird. But but it, this is the one I got excited about was the uh, the single campaign builder. Matter of fact, just yesterday. I created the campaign. I'm trying to like clear out a whole bunch of um, one st- uh, like some stock on on one brand that I'm discontinuing, and so I was like, I just want to create a like a clearance ad that targets you know multiple ones. And, and you know, six months ago, I would have had to go into Seller Central instead of Atomic, and then create the campaign and figure everything out that way. But but you know, yesterday I was able to do it in 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 Atomic. So I love that single campaign builder. Uh, other, other than that, what else is there? Or did you want to talk about that single campaign builder? Yeah, later? just under the, you know, the goal of Atomic, obviously, when you're building our, your campaigns, the point of it is that if you do that, then you get all these rules built in, right? You, you've built your campaigns, uh, Bradley, so you get your, you baked in your new and negative keyword, uh, keyword rules, which is basically Atomic looking at the search terms for you. So that is the point of Atomic. But sometimes we get sellers that have a bunch of campaigns already. Right? So we don't need them to create new campaigns. They just need to add rules to their existing campaigns. But sometimes, let's say, you know, we suggest they have at least four different campaign types. An auto campaign, a broad research campaign, an exact match keyword campaign, and a product targeting campaign. Well, let's say they only have three out of the mm-hmm. four that we require. They can just use a single builder now, create the missing campaign in that, in that, data, in that campaign structure that makes up a rule. And then the, cool, the coolest thing about Atomic is that you can add that campaign into the rule. So that, to, to, to me, that's that's the biggest selling point of the single campaign builder is that you can really quickly just make sure that you have all the campaigns that you need for a rule to run correctly. And right when you make that campaign, you can add it to, to that existing rule. All right, so, you know, it was actually funny, a couple of days ago in, in our company Slack, uh, I, on my own, just discovered something that I didn't even know I had access to. I actually have a Helium 10 Elite account, so I didn't realize that this feature uh, was something that was only for elite members, but I believe now it's available to even diamond members. Uh, do you remember what that was? Uh, yeah, if you're talking about the the, the bulk update feature, yes, yeah. yes, okay, yes, that is as a, as of selling scale that was released to diamond as well. So, what that uh, can you explain what that what what that is for uh, well, for people? You know, what we what we wanted to do is kind of like give more power to our analytics section. So, our analytics section of Atomic is pretty powerful. You, you at an account level, you can look at your data, however you know, by ad group level, campaign level, all your keywords, all your search terms, like in an entire account. Uh, so whereas in, you know, the ad manager section, that's broken up by campaign. Um, so if you want to really quickly make optimizations, you can now do that within our analytics section. The The previous action, in the only action in analytics prior to this was on our search terms. So if you're looking at all your search terms um, and you see something that's not, you know, working, you can add them to negative. Well, we've added the capabilities now to you know change your bids, uh, change your budgets uh, in the analytics. So it's it's basically uh, we're we're moving towards more of these kind of bulk bulk features, these bulk actions that you can take, um, and we've started that in in our analytics section. And we're going to keep bu- uh, beefing up the things that you can do in our analytics section because it's just something again. We listen to our sellers and they're saying, hey, it's really super great that I have all this account level viewability, uh, but it's 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 read only. I still have to go into the campaign or into the ad manager maybe to take an action. Uh, so now we're giving those actions uh, it, you know, directly, um, the capability directly within our analytics uh, section. Guys, um, you know, we've been talking a lot about, you know, PVC in general. We've been talking about Atomic. If if you are interested in trying Atomic, it's available for Helium 10, uh, Diamond plans and above. So, uh, you know, if, you're, if you've got a Platinum plan, you know, I would say try it out for two months. You know, like uh, one month might not be enough time to really get the full value. So just commit, you know, two months, uh, upgrade to Diamond. You, you get tons of other features too with Diamond. It's not just about Atomic. You know, back in the day, the, about the only difference between Platinum and and Diamond was Atomic, but now you've got a lot of listing analyzer features and special Cerebro things like key estimated keyword sales and tons and tons of a, stuff. We also have a brand new uh, Amazon PPC Academy. Yes, At PPC I, Academy now is also yes. for um, uh, 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 only for Diamond uh, and, and above. Yes, well, uh, d- depending on when this airs, it's free for everyone through the month of September. That's right, that's right. <laughs> it, it, this, is, this is launching, uh, you know, we're still in September right now. So if you guys yeah. are listening to this n- near when we release this, yeah. 
you have about a couple days left to go in there. Go to helium10.com forward slash PPC dash academy uh, dot com. And then you could sign up. You just sign up with your email address that you use for Helium 10, and then it'll, it'll show up like wherever you see Freedom Ticket. But if you're listening to this, you know, October 1st or October right. 10th October or whatever. October 1st, it's going to be diamond only. <laughs> yeah, you can still sign up, but only, you'll only be able to get access uh, to it if you have a diamond in the account. And, and this is over 30 modules with, with Vince and uh, Mina Elias, who, you know, talk about it's not just about atomic, it's just mainly well, not like atomic. Mina actually. Elias does, does a super deep dive into how to manually do things in, in Seller Central. Um, he's even included, uh, you know, some spreadsheets with macros on it that he uses, you know, for, to manage his, his clients' accounts. Um, and then I kind of also come in, do, I do deeper dives into, you know, what are sponsor brands, what are sponsor brand videos, sponsor display. Um, and also then, you know, how to leverage a, a third party tool like Atomic to do some of the same actions, just, uh, you know, much more streamlined. So it's beneficial, you know, for everybody, because uh, you're going to learn the basics of how to do PPC um, and from an intermediate to advanced uh, perspective as well. I mean, beginners can still watch it, but I really think that people that are already doing PPC are going to get a lot out of it. So, uh, yeah, I, I do hope that people you know, for free through, through the month of September, go ahead and, and sign up, uh, but it will be gated um, at our, our diamond planned, um, you know, starting October 1st. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Now it's time for our TST 30 second tip. What's a 30 to one minute tip that you can give us a, about anything? Okay. So yeah, my 30 second tip is make sure you guys, number one, you're running sponsor brand videos because they're super powerful. Did a case study earlier this year with one of our sellers, but make sure you're following the requirements. I've heard from Amazon that a lot of our sellers don't follow the requirements, so they end up getting rejected. So when you're building them out, you're taking all that time and energy, follow the requirements or else you will get rejected. All right. Well, Vince, I um, look forward to, to you know touching bases with you next year to see what's new in Atomic. But everybody out there, again, I think you guys understood the moral of the story today is if you have been using Atomic for a while, get into it because there's so much more cool stuff, especially with the uh, Google Ads integration and some of those other things that, that Vince mentioned. So Vince, thank you so much, and we'll be seeing you soon.